Now, we, we know and we make no secret of the extraordinary difficulties that have attended this, this um, I think, very noble and uh, risky and worthwhile enterprise. Now, I could have said this in front of any audience and against any antagonist, but in my last two minutes, I will have to say that I believe it is a disgrace that a member of the British House of Commons should go before the United States Senate Subcommittee and not testify, but decline to testify, and to insult all those who try to ask him questions with the most vile and cheap gutter snipe abuse. I think that's a disgrace. And oh, it's it. I've got one minute. I've got one minute. I've got one minute. And it is worse. It is worse than a disgrace. If you. That's not coming. That's not coming out of my time. If you knew how you looked and sounded, comrades, when you do that. Well, you, the cameras can take care of it. That's not coming out of my time. It is not just a disgrace. It is a crime. But he has profited from the theft of money from the Iraqi Oil for Food program, has told continuous lies about his profiteering from it and the foul associates that he made at a time when Iraqi children were dying and 11 billion from this program, 11 billion, went to the murderer and criminal and sadist and fanatic Saddam Hussein. How can anyone who's a business partner of this regime show their face in a city like this and not content with it? Not content with it. Not content with it. He turns up in Damascus. The man's search for a tyrannical fatherland never ends. The Soviet Union's let him down. Albania's gone. The Red Army's out of Afghanistan and Czechoslovakia. The hunt persists. Saddam has been overthrown and his criminal connections with him have been exposed. But on to the next, on the 30th of July, in Damascus in Syria, appearing, I've given it all to you in a piece of paper, in front of Mr. Assad, whose death squads are cutting down the leaders of democracy in Lebanon, as this is going on, to tell the Syrian people they're fortunate to have such a leader. The slobbering Dauphin, who they got because he's the son of the slobbering tyrant who came before him. How anyone with a tincture of socialist principle can act or speak in this way is beyond me, and I hope it is, gentlemen. Far beyond you and far beneath your contempt. Thank you. George, George Galloway, your response. Well, uh, Chair, ladies and gentlemen, slobbering was the note that Mr. Hitchens chose to end on. I'm not sure that was wise. Bring but, it on, uh, bring it on. But uh, I want to begin by praising Mr. Hitchens 